service on page 167, divine service 72. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Confess our sins to God the Father. God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgive you all your sins as a common ordained servant of the Lord, and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's chant the intro together as printed. from above, and for all salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord.
us pray. Merciful Lord, please and defend your church by the sacrifice of thanksgiving, the fruits of his redeeming work, and daily following his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your soul, o Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Thus say the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who suddenly follows his own heart. They say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord, right has gone forth and whirling tempest, and will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his father. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they run. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way. And from the evil of their deeds, am I God at hand, declared the Lord, and not a God of clear out. Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him? Declares the Lord. Do I not feel heaven and earth? Declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed, alone shall there be lies in the earth of the prophets who prophesy lies, and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by the dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has dreamed tell the dream. But let him who has my word speak my word faithfully, what has trod in common with wit, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Let's do the gravel together as printing. reading is from Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom he was said, True Isaac, shall your offspring be named? He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which Figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessing in Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head in his hat. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden from three months by these parents because they saw that the child was beautiful 
and they were not afraid of the king's panic. By faith, Moses, when he was wrong, when he was brought up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, chosen rather to be mistreated with the people of God, than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater, greater dwelt than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking at the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn may not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of the Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me to tell the Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, Lord David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdom, enforced justice, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of witness, became mighty war, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection, some were turned some were tortured, refused to accept the release, so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy wandering about in deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves on the earth. And all these, though commanded through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings and closely. And let us run with endurance thy race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy was, was set before him and during the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the hallelujah of <laughs> St. Luke chapter 12. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on earth, and with the word already kindled, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great it is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No. I tell you, but rather division, for from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be, they will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, 
and border and lag against moderate lag, he also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say that once, a shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how the, to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but whether you know, know how to interpret the present time. This is the word of the Lord. We confess the Nicene Creed on page 174. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the God not made, being the one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us sin. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Doing good? All right. Did you sleep good yesterday? Nice. That's great. I'm glad to see you all of you here today. So, let's see. Our Bible reading today says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Have you ever run a race? Have you ever won a medal or a trophy running a race? Oh, no, I have not. Been. No? <laughs> you won? Wow. All right. A triathlon. Oh, wow. All right. It is a thrill to run a race and hear the voices of the people who are watching as they shout words of encouragement. It is even greater thrill when you finish the race and win a medal or a trophy. Several years ago, when the Olympics were held in Barcelona, Spain, the world saw one of the greatest moments in Olympic history. Derek Redmond, a young man from Britain, had dreamed all his life of winning a gold medal in the 400 meter race. He had worked hard to get the Olympics, and his dream was within his reach. He was in the semifinals and was running the race of his life. He could see the finish line just ahead as he rounded the final turn 
Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain in the back of his leg, and he fell to the track with a torn muscle in his right leg. As the medical attendants ran toward him, Derek strolled to his feet. He started to hoop toward the finish line on one foot in attempt to finish the race. Suddenly, a large man came out of the stands, pushed aside the security wall, and ran to Derek's side. It was Jim Ridmon, Derek's father. You don't have to do this, he told his son. His son said, yes, I do, said Derek. Well then, said his father, we're going to finish this together. And they did. They stayed in Derek's lane all the way to the end. At first, the crowd watching in silence. Then, they rose to their feet and cheered and whipped. Derek Ridman didn't win the world medal. But he walked away with the incredible memory of a loving father who, when he saw his son in pain, left his seat in the stands to help him finish the race. That is what the Bible lesson is about today. It teaches us that life is like a race that has been said before us. We may struggle and face many obstacles, but we have a great crowd of witnesses who are cheering us. We have a Heavenly Father who loves us and who helps us when the pain is too great. We have a Savior who left his place in heaven and came to earth to show us how to run the race. If we kill our eyes on him, how can we help but finish the race? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, sometimes life is difficult. Helps us to keep our eyes on you and to run the race that is before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, enjoy your seats. We continue with the end.
and doing my whole my my homework, I went out with my friends to play. When I saw that it is getting dark, I ran directly to my house to ask my parents, "What time is it?" And if they told me it is 7 p.m., I just stopped doing everything I was doing. So I could enjoy my favorite TV show, The Wonder Years, with Kevin Arnold and his friend Paul. When I was a child, I was so impatient for that time to come that I could not wait for anything else that the time will come and not be impatient for my favorite show to start. As a children of God, the question of time isn't an important question. To the contrary, time is very important. We live in a unique time. The time between the already and the not yet. Most of the promises of God have been fulfilled, but there are some of his promises for which still wait the fulfillment, not the least of which is his coming to judge the living and the dead. What time is it? With this morning gospel reading before us, the question is set in the overall context of Jesus' mission to save the world from sin, death, and the devil. What time is it? Where are we at in Jesus' work of redemption? What does this hour bring and what should we lack for in the future? What Jesus said regarding things to come, my son, I've been shocking to you. I came, he said, to cast fire on earth and with that word already kindled, I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how great it is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather the vision. Jesus talks about casting fire on earth, great distress in his baptism and division. What are we to make of these things? Well, by this time in his life and ministry, Jesus had already been baptized in that baptism of water. He placed himself under God's wrath on behalf of all humanity. As he said to a confused disciple, namely John the Baptist, who didn't understand why Jesus should be baptized by him, permitted now to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus has, had been baptized by water, and as such, he had put himself under God's wrath. Here it all, he laments another baptism that lay ahead of him. The first baptism was by water. The second will be by blood. The first took place in the Jordan. The second one will take place on the cross of the Calvary. The fiery wrath of God laid on Jesus at his baptism will only mainly lead to his death on the cross. You see, from his baptism, Jesus stood under the Father's wrath and continued to stand under the Father's wrath until the wrath was satiated in his crucifixion. Thus, with every sickness, Jesus healed. With every sin, he forgave. With every dead person he raised from the grave, Jesus bought, released creation from its bondage and absorbed it into his body all sickness, sin, and death. This is how he put himself in the position to receive God's wrath against the sin. From the moment he stepped forward publicly in his baptism as the world's Messiah, the process began. For this he came, he threw out his life that he was to bear his fiery wrath and judgment. In his passionate plea before us this morning, he expressed his wish that it will be already finished. As much as he despised the shame of the cross, he obeyed the will of his father. 
he completed his ministry with a bloody baptism where the full wrath of God was placed upon him as he atoned for the world's sin. This frame, if you will, of water and blood around Jesus' ministry recalls that but water and blood flow from his side at his head and the cross and the water and blood testify that he is God, Messiah. As the scriptures say, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the witness is one. Because the Spirit is the truth. For those who are witnessing are three. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are of one accord. What time is it? Since Jesus has been baptized by water and the blood, it is right here and right now the hour of grace. Jesus comes out, Come to me all of you who are labor and are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. Those who labor and are heavy, heavy laden are those who have sought to claw and to climb their way back to God, who have come to the sovereign realization that they no made any progress whatsoever. They have worked and worked and worked to win God's favor, to get good God to smile upon them and love them. And they, by God's grace, have formed their efforts fully. No one comes to the Father, Jesus said, but by me. What we so desperately seek to acquire has been given to us freely in the water that impart to us the merit, the grace, and forgiveness of Jesus, bloody baptism. Since he had been justified by faith, Apostle Paul writes, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into his grace, in which, in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. What time is it? <coughs> It is the hour of grace. It is also whoever a time to long for and anticipate the unique peace that we will finally enjoy and the glory of heaven. Certainly, a measure of that peace we know here and now. The dividing wall of right of the sin and of the dead that separated us, that separated you from God, has been torn down. As such, you enjoy the peace that passes all understanding for whereas Jesus was dragged in God's wrath in his baptism. You were clothed with his righteousness in yours. And yet, what you have that peace that passes all understanding, the wall around you, the wall in which you live, it is in turmoil. Nations fight against nations. Warring factions fight against one another on the streets across the fruity plain. The differences that cause such turmoil are often trivial. However, sometimes those differences go to the very heart. They go to the very core of the meaning of life, which is to say, they have to do with Jesus and the gospel of his renewing love. The truth of the matter is, the gospel itself is divisible. It can literally set father against their sons and sons against their fathers. One believes in Christ and the other doesn't. The one who believes is great by their love of rejecting Christ and the salvation and life he came to give. Worse yet, the one who doesn't believe in Christ is an enmity with God, and thus he finds himself an enmity even with those he loves. Jesus told us, he told you that tension 
that division will exist in your time here on earth. Still, he comes to you in those tense and disrupting in situation, and he comforts you trouble so. While your peace is erupted, your hope springs eternal. Even those who subtly deny Jesus can yet be brought to faith in him, for it is the hour of grace. As Jesus comforts your troubled soul in this hour of grace, he gives you the resolve and the strength to confess him before him, before men. Your goal, my friends, your greatest treasure cannot be temporal peace. Transformed by the gospel of Jesus, love and grace. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. As such it is your great honor, indeed, it is your great privilege to bear witnesses to Christ and to him crucified for the sins of the world. What time is it? Well, it is the hour of grace. But it's also a time to long for and to anticipate the unique peace that you will finally enjoy in the glory of heaven. God grant you the holy longing and anticipation. But most of all, God grant that it be satisfied in Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue <laughs> with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the Lord's mercy upon us and upon our people as they have need. For the word of the Lord to be preached freely and faithfully, for the sinner to be warned and urged to repentance, and for the penitent to rejoice in the grace of forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the church, those whom the Lord has gathered by the voice of his word and the saving waters of baptism, and for those who have not heard and who have not been baptized, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this congregation, our life together around the world and table of the Lord, for the work of God that goes forth from his place, and for the Lord that bless and prosper all things according to his will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all pastors who, have, who faithfully serve the Lord, for all church workers who serve with them, and for those preparing for full-time church work at our college and seminaries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Lord to strengthen all families and bless the children and trust to their care, for those widows and orphans, they, that they may be protected and cared for, and for the aged, aged and infirm, that we may surround them with God's love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For unity in the gospel, for harmony and concord within the church, and for our common life, that our practices may also give testimony to our unity of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace in the world, for our nation and good government, for wise and faithful leaders, for those who protect the liberty and the armed forces, and for those who judge our laws and guard the rule of law amongst us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the faithful who will commune here today, for goodly preparation, so that we may be ready to receive the body and blood of the Lord worthily. And for the fruits of this sacrament to be displayed in our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, for those who have been absent from the Lord's house, for those whom, whom we have heard or wondered in word or deed, and for 
the reconciliation of all by the forgiveness of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those not yet of the kingdom, for a faithful confession of Christ to all still in darkness, and for the works of mercy by which we demonstrate Christ's love to those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who are celebrating anniversaries in our church, birthday, baptism, confirmation, and wedding, Heavenly Father, all times are in your hands, Lord Jesus. Your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for another year of celebration. Let us pray to the Lord. For Ali, we pray, mighty God, that she may return home soon. Thus we pray for the lowest of family, that you will grant us strength in faith in Christ, that they may bear up under his burden and be at peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the safety children, for Courtney and Ashley, Carolyn Risto and Chloe Metron, for those serving in the military, Brittany, Joel, and Derek, and for those with special needs, we pray, loving Father, for the Eggman family, Guy, Maria, Malcolm, Ed, Lisa, Shin, Garrett, Georgian, Ron, and Lori, that you will keep them steadfast in trouble and comfort, and comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick, for Pastor Leonard Risto, he is uh, now in the hospice. For Karen Fane, Jim, Harold, Elizabeth, Brian, Tommy, Carissa, Paul, Katie, Maria, Raymond, John, Lorraine, Lynn, Miranda, Carol, Greg, Betty, Clarence, George, Josefina, Riley, Maria, Linda, Sandra, Mary, Lorraine, Odette, Catherine, Royal, Cheryl, Dan, Bobby, Eileen, Pat, Cameron, Matthew, Charlie, Alice, David, Bobby, Marion, Janet, Carolyn, VJ Jackson, that God will grant healing to their bodies, strength to the weak, endurance to bear up on their trail, patience to await his deliverance, and peace at the last. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the grieving and all who work the loss of those whom they love, for the renewal of hope that because Christ is risen, all who died in Christ, in Christ shall live in him, and for the grace to redeem our the Lord's promise never to abandon or, for, or forsake his people in their need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for hearts that cheerfully acknowledge the Lord's goodness for generosity, to supply help to those in any need or want, and for the grace to support the church and the work of the kingdom, both near and far. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O gracious Lord, because we have known your love in Christ, and because you have promised to hear and give answer to the prayers of your people, we trust that you will supply all this need to all those for whom we have prayed and that you will Guard your church against all her enemies until the day when you will deliver us into your presence forevermore. To Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we gather our first fruits, tithes, and offerings. As the offering baskets are being passed around, you shall find the handbook of the fellowship in the pew. Please sign and pass it on if you are a first time guest. We will especially ask for you others so that we might recognize your attendance with us this morning. We are celebrating the Lord's Supper this morning because of our care and concern for you. We do practice the loving practice of close communion. If you are a first time guest, we will, we will ask that you read your statement of the practice of the Lord's Supper as printed in the card phone in front of the pew, back in front of you, of you. And if you have, should have any questions, then you will speak with me before approaching the Lord's table. Now, uh, we receive offerings.
We continue with the offertory on page 176. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, good and salutary, that we should all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ the Lord. Whom on, on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loudly magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and say, into our flesh, to be our sin and be our Savior. We repent and joy, who will receive the salvation accomplished for us with all the unviolating sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and estrange us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, and he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful marriage feasts of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Recently, receive our praise, deliver and preserve us to you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. O Father, who art in heaven. On the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take in it, this is my body which is given for you. This do remembers of me. In the same way also he took the cup after the supper, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you, this cup is the new testament in my blood, which is served for you for the forgiveness of of your sins. This do as often you drink it in remembrance of me. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you favor and give you peace. Amen.